Okay gang, so in this video I'd like to talk about widget life cycles and a couple of the different life cycle methods that we can tap into. So, so far in this playlist we've seen two types of widget, a stateless one and a stateful one. Now a stateless widget, that cannot have state that changes over time. None of the data changes inside that. And also the build function only runs once inside that widget when it's created. So if we were to try and change something over time, that's not going to be updated in the screen to reflect that because it's completely stateless. Once it's built, it doesn't then rebuild itself when things change. If we wanted something to update in a stateless widget, what we'd have to do is destroy the widget completely and then create a new instance of it with some different data. So that's a stateless widget, pretty simple. Now a stateful widget, that can have state which changes over time. So for example, say we had some kind of counter widget and that counter variable inside it changed over time. Now to change that, what we do is call the set state method. And when we change the data inside that method, that triggers the build function to rebuild that widget so that we see that updated on the screen. Now, stateful widgets also have a couple of different lifecycle methods that we can tap into. So I'm just going to show you a couple of those now. We first have the init state method, and that is the first method to be called once our state object has been created. Now, this method is only called once when the widget is first created, and it's probably a good place to subscribe to streams or any kind of object that's going to change our widget data in the future. Now, after that, we have the build function, and this actually builds the widget tree. And it runs quite a lot in a stateless widget because it's triggered every time we use set state. So we use set state to change the data, and that re-triggers the build function to rebuild the widget tree so that we see that change on the screen. And then finally, we have this dispose method, which is triggered when the widget or the state object is completely removed. Now, we'll eventually be creating a widget which updates weather data, so we're going to be tapping into the init state lifecycle method to set up that data. But for now, what I want to do is show you a simple example to demo this lifecycle method. Okay then, so what I'd like to do now is tap into one of these lifecycle methods and just demo how this works. Just a quick example. So I've gone to the choose location page and I'm going to come to this state object and enter down here a couple of times. And then I want to tap into the init state function. Remember, that was the function that runs first when the state object is first created. So I'm going to say, oops, not in capitals, init. And then I'm going to tab to select this suggestion. And you can see we have this init state function. And it's also an override function, meaning that we're overriding the original init state function that we inherit from this state class. So we're overriding it and inside we have two different things. First of all, we have this to do. That's just an Android Studio feature. We can add to do this way, quite nice. And we add to do is by doing a double forward slash, then caps to do and a colon, then whatever the to do is. And then little reminders of things you need to do inside the app, but maybe you're not going to do them just yet. And they actually show up down here. If you click on to do, we can see we have a couple of to do's. We have one inside pages and then choose location, which is this file and this thing over here. So that's a nice little feature, but we do not need that. So I'm going to delete it. The other thing we see is super.init state. And that is basically saying, OK, run the original function that we're actually overriding. Uh, we use super to do that dot init state. So whatever function we actually inherit for init state, run that first inside here. Then we can do our extra code inside this version of the function as well. So what I'm going to do is just a quick print statement to say init state function ran, just so we can see down here in the console when this actually ran. So I've done that there. I'm also going to copy that and paste this inside the build method. So we should see both of these run when we load up this page, because remember, this fires once when we first load up the widget or the state object and then this fires every time we need to build up the widget tree which we need to to begin with so let's save this now and what i'm going to do is move this up so we can see a bit more then i'm going to go to the choose location page by clicking on this button 
And now we can see init state function ran first of all, and then init state function ran again. That's because we've not changed this to build. I'm actually gonna change that to build and save it. And then I'm gonna go back over here and click edit location again. And we should see this time init state function ran, then build function ran. Okay, cool. So every time we actually go to that page, these things are gonna run because when we go away from it, we're taking the widget off and we're getting rid of the state object. When we go to it again, we're creating it again. So this runs to begin with and this runs to begin with to build up the widget tree. So that happens every time we go to that screen. So next what I'd like to do is add a little bit of state to this state object right here and then change it so that we can see that every time we call set state and we change that state, we trigger this build function to rebuild. So what I'm gonna do is just create an integer called counter and set it equal to zero to begin with. Now down in the actual template, I'd like to just add a button and we'll do that inside the body. So let me get rid of this text and instead we'll just do a raised button and inside that we need the on pressed property which is a function and inside this function we're going to call set state oops like that so set state and inside that we need to pass a function and that function will actually change the counter so we'll say counter plus equals one to add one to the current value and then after we've set the state, we should see this print again because the data is gonna change and that triggers a rebuild. So what I'm gonna do now is actually add some text to this raised button. So to do that, we need to say child and that's gonna be a text widget. And what I'm gonna do is actually output the counter. So I could do this in a string by doing a string and then dollar sign and then the counter variable. And before that, I'm gonna say counter is and then we output the number. So let's try this now. I'm gonna save it, and we can see count is zero to begin with, but I'm gonna go away from the page first of all. I'm gonna zoom this up, if I can. Where is it? Run. And so we can see these different print statements. Let's go to the page first of all, click it, and we see this runs once to begin with, and then the build function runs once to begin with. Now, when we click this button and we use set state, that should trigger the build function to rerun, and then print this again. So let's see. And we can see we get the build function ran every time we click on this button. So we're rerunning this function every time we use set state like this. And that's how the data gets updated on the actual screen. But notice this isn't running again. That only runs once at the very start when we create the state object and only this reruns as we change the state. So there we go, my friends. That is a little introduction to widget life cycles. And we're gonna be using this init state function later on to get data from a third party API.